and we're back. Glad you can continue to join us if you are actually still joining us <laughs> because I know these things can run a little long. But the third book that I'm going to talk about of Vaughn's, I'm sorry, the fourth really, um, but this is another long running series um, and it's not quite as good as why, uh, but it's just different, really. Um, and that is Ex Machina. Now, this is basically, you know, <laughs> it's, you know, about a man who sucks as a superhero. A man, you know, basically, he is, uh, you know, his name is Mitchell Hundred, and uh, he is, he's, the book starts out, he is the mayor of New York City. Um, and he's reflecting back on uh, some very personal uh, uh, relationships and things, and, and, and hints at a very great tragedy uh, that actually we don't find out about until the end of the book. And basically, it's you know it's about a man, um, you know he's uh, Mitchell Hundred. He's a civil engineer. Uh, when the story actually starts, um, and he's at I believe the Bro the Brooklyn Bridge, um, and uh, a some kind of strange artifact, some strange green glowing artifact, explodes in his face. Uh, he survives, but is you know kind of you know not horribly scarred, but he has these kind of little indentations in his face that indicate that you know obviously some of this artifact, whatever it is, uh, is still embedded in his body, and it gives him the ability to talk to machines, and basically he can make them do what he wants them to do, um, and so. Being weaned on comics himself, he turns with the help of uh, uh, his friends, uh, his kind of, you know, well, kind of rough and tumble bodyguard, if you will, uh, Bradbury, and his, uh, you know, kind of surrogate father figure uh, goes by the name of Kremlin. He's uh, an old Russian uh, who. Uh, uh, you know, works out on Coney Island, and the three of them basically, you know, combine to make this, uh, to make a jetpack and a costume uh, and some non-lethal weapons uh, for uh, the superhero that would be called the Great Machine. Now, again, he's terrible as a superhero. He's constantly fucking up um, until... September the 11th of 2001, in which he fails in this universe uh, of Ex Machina, he fails to save the first building, but he is able to save the second one. And that catapults him, uh, because basically he had stopped before then, be, you know, before the, uh, uh, before September the 11th, uh, he had given up his costume wearing days and essentially had turned to politics and he was going to uh, basically do a grassroots independent you know run as an independent uh, for the mayor of New York City um, and uh, because of his you know because of what he did on September the 11th uh, basically that helps him win the election which is not to say, he shouldn't be mayor because, you know, the whole idea of the book is that he, you know, he's a shit superhero, but he's a pretty damn good mayor. And there is a lot of, you know, there's a lot of political uh, intrigue. Um, there's a lot of political hot button topics. It takes place mainly over the course of uh, about uh, four, you know, about four years. Of, uh, of his term, but in the last book, it skips ahead, uh, you know, for, uh, to, uh, to 2008, um, you know, it goes from basically like 2000, I believe 2005, and then just, you know, the last couple chapters cover the next few years. 
um, and what uh, his destiny may very well be. And it, like I said, it deals with all sorts of political issues uh, from, you know, art and censorship to uh, obviously, you know, to, you know, to terrorism, to, uh, you know, just, you know, things as simple as, uh, you know, just regular old psychopaths. And he does have, uh, you know, he has an arch nemesis and, um, he, you know, a couple, <laughs> uh, but of course, uh, I think ultimately his worst enemy is his, is himself. Um, it's never, you know, he's always a good guy. Um, but in the final act, now this was also drawn by Tony Harris. Most of the issues were drawn by Tony Harris. Uh, there were a couple of one shots or maybe two issues at a time where, uh, he, uh, where uh, Harris did not do the art. Um, and the last uh, couple books of, the, or the last couple issues of the series, um, it almost doesn't feel like Harris was doing the art because it gets kind of sketchy and sloppy. It's not clean lines like you're used to seeing from Tony Harris because he's a brilliant artist and, you know, it just, it, you know, Maybe that was intentional. I don't know, or maybe it was more of a, a, a you know a time press issue, because I think they were hungry to get out the finale of uh, Ex Machina, and it just ended recently. I you know recently got the final trade, and I read the final trade, and it was like every you know it's like the air had just completely went out of the room. It was so devastating uh, to learn what those tragedies were. It's not just one that he hints at. It's it seems to be just one, but it's it's several tragedies of his life. Um, and when you finally get there, it is totally devastating and totally brilliant. And one of the things I've often talked about that I love about Josh Whedon is something that uh, Brian K. Vaughan takes very seriously, is that he's not afraid to kill off characters, characters that you love. Um, and And that's actually a good thing because if you're never in fear, if you're never afraid of the danger that somebody faces, you have, you have no drama. And by, you know, sometimes killing, by sometimes killing, a, you know, sometimes a main or at least, you know, a very strong supporting character, um, it gives... You know, it gives you that sense of realism that uh, uh, that is so often missing in uh, a really great comic. So we've got four books. Go to your local comic book store. Go to Amazon. Go to uh, you know things from another world. Go to any website where you can get comics and get all of Vaughn's. Uh, runaways issues um, get every single trade of both Why the Last Man and Ex Machina and also get Doctor Strange the Oath um, I have not read The Pride of Baghdad so don't harangue me about that please um, but uh, Brian K. Vaughan is a really special uh, writer um, and I hope that uh, not too long from now he will return to the comics world and give us something else new and brilliant because that's just the kind of guy that he's, he is the new, uh, I guess I would say he would, he would be close, you know, he'd probably be the closest thing to the new, the next Alan Moore. Uh, Brubaker's kind of more of the next Frank Miller, um, at least in my estimation. If I were to compare my favorites to what these two guys are doing right now. So that's it for this segment of the Shadow Gallery, which is basically just my tribute to Brian K. Vaughan. Uh, I doubt that he'll ever see this, um, but if you do, Brian, thank you for all the wonderful work that you've done throughout your career and keep them coming. This is Shadow Gallery, signing off.